Hello and welcome to the 39th video in this series programming a chess engine in JavaScript. In this video there won't be any code because we're going to start implementing the search algorithms now for the engine and I want to talk a little bit about how we're going to do that. An excellent reference to read through is a link I'll be posting on the description for this video and it's some programming topics for chess by a guy called Bruce Moreland who made an excellent engine called Ferret commercial and also a long time ago made an open source engine called gerbil which is a really really good uh, efficiently written open source uh, program and he's described as you can see here in the, in the menu various parts of the anatomy of the algorithms in a chess program and the bits really to read to understand what's going on are, and are not very long is on the min max search the alpha beta search and the iterative deepening. They're the bits that really it's worth reading through to just get an understanding of how the program's going to work. Otherwise it might be a little bit difficult. And inside MinMax, which is what we'll start with in this video, is basically MinMax is you walk through the tree trying to get the best score for your position. And the reason it's called MinMax is say the position is white to move. White is what would be the maximizer because he wants to get the biggest score possible and black would be the minimizer because he wants to make the score for white as low as possible so as minimal as possible and the way it works is as it says here if a side to move is white you return as the maximizer the result of max otherwise as black the minimizer and then you have a couple of functions here I won't go through them in detail because we're going to talk on some slides in a minute about that or I'm going to talk, but basically the maximize function says if the value we get back from our search is better than our best score so far then set that value and the minimizer does exactly the opposite if the value is less than so it tries to get the lowest score for a position. So looking at minmax in terms of a tree, we've got a game tree here where each side has two legal moves in a given position and the position is going to a depth of three. And I'm going to walk through this in min-max fashion so you can understand how it works. And we'll say that the square represents white, so the maximizer tries to get the score as high as possible. And the circle represents black, the minimizer trying to get the score as low as possible. So if we take the tree in example and say that white makes this move, black makes this move, and then white makes both the moves available to him. The first one scores a 4 and the second one scores a 6. Well, as maximizer white will take the six he'll make the move that gets the six because he's trying to get the highest score possible which means black as the minimizer at the moment would have here a best case of a six so black makes the second move available and white then makes the first of his two moves available and here white would choose the nine because again as maximizer white would like to take the the, the the nine because it's the highest score available. Well black is the minimizer so given the choice of these two black is going to take the six because that's the lowest score available. So right then at the top of the tree at the moment we would have a six when making this first move to the left here. So now looking at the other side of the tree down at the bottom here at the root well for this node here white would take the max which is a 2 and for this node here or these two nodes here white would say well I'll take the 1 that's the maximal here well black takes the minimum of these because he's the minimizer and says well that's the 1 and now white else maximizer chooses at the root do I want to go this way or this way well obviously white's going to choose to go this way and take the 6 because that's the best score for the position and that's how minmax works with the maximizer and minimizer and it's a totally brute force approach it searches every move available in the game tree the way that looks in suedo code you can actually combine when i talked about these two functions min and max here bruce morland site goes on then to talk about negamax which is actually a way to combine these two functions min and max together so that you don't need to have two separate functions with your search and the way this works is in what I've got in the Suedo code here. And the big difference is, is that rather than returning the score from White's point of view, the maximizers, you always return the score from the point of view of the side to move. And you then negate the result of the min max. 
that's a little bit confusing to get the head around to start with. But let's say we st well we start with the best score for the position as minus infinity. And let's just walk through this tree here that I've trimmed off just to be depth 2, so it's easy to keep in the mind. But let's say we start here with white to move. And for each move in position, well, in the starting position, white has two moves available. So let's say he makes this first move. And then we call, min we'll call minus min max, and now we'll be calling with depth minus 1. Well, depth started at 2, so depth will now be 1. So we come back into min max with depth as 1, and now it's black to move. And he has two moves. So he calls with depth minus 1, minus min max, on each of those moves available. Well now, depth is 0, and we're here, so we return for this move score from the side's point of view, which is a 6. And then we come back into minus min max, so the score will now be a minus 6. Well, it will improve on best score, because that was minus infinity, so best score is minus 6. And for the next move, we would return a minus 9 because of the minus, si minus sign. Well, that wouldn't improve upon best score, so we would end up with a minus 6 in here. And now we go back up again to the root, and this minus 6, because we'll have returned that as our best score, sorry, that should say best score, I've just realised down here. We return our best score. That will then become a plus 6 because it's negated again back up the tree. So the best score we have so far then is a plus 6 at the root. And the whole thing goes again, so this would be a 2 returned as a minus 2, this would be returned as a minus 1, which would make a minus 1 here, which would be returned then negated as a plus 1, but wouldn't improve upon the 6, so we would end up at the root, be returning 6 as the best score, and would also keep record of what move led to us getting that 6, which was the first move. So that's how min-max works. The problem with min-max and searching the tree in this way is that you saw when we were looking at one of the perfed positions that in the middle game this position had I think 48 legal moves and had to depth 5 196 million positions which essentially means no matter how fast your chess engine is if you do a min-max approach and search every position in the middle game you aren't going to get any further than depth 5 realistically maybe depth 6 if you've got very very efficient move generation and make and unmake. Um, so we need to do something which allows us to trim a lot of the tree and there is a foolproof way of trimming the tree dramatically and this is called alpha beta. And the way alpha beta works, if we take exactly the same tree as we used inside min max, is we set what's called an, a lower and an upper bound. So we set, and these are called alpha and beta, so alpha is set to minus infinity, and alpha represents the best score that the maximizer can achieve. So at the start, it's minus infinity because it's the worst case scenario. And the opposite applies for beta, it's set to infinity, and represents the best score that the minimizer can achieve. So if we start walking through the tree in alpha beta fashion, then we'll set each node, the maximizer's got a minus infinity, the best he can achieve, the minimizer's got an affinity, the best he can achieve, and so on, right down to the bottom of the tree. And things start exactly the same as they did in the min-max fashion. So first move made for white, he's got a 4, and has a scores a value then of 4 with one move made. And also now alpha would be improved because it beats the worst case scenario for alpha to a 4. We go into the next node, and now alpha would be improved to a 6, because uh, white, uh, as maximizer, has now found that there's a move that improves upon the 4, improves upon alpha, and alpha would now, having been passed in as a 4, with betas to this infinity, would now have a value of 6. The way it gets interesting with alpha beta is then in the next node. So if we look then, after taking our 6 now here as the maximizer's value and putting the 6 back as the best score so far that the minimizer can have, then when we go in here, the minimizer, having got a score now for this position, has a beta of 6, because in this position the best score available is no longer a infinity, but it's now a 6. So now we walk down this left-hand side of the tree here, and we score a 7 in this bottom node. Well, now that this, 
the bounds that were passed in here are a beta of 6 and alpha still of minus infinity because that comes from this node here. And now what we find is, is that white here can improve this alpha bound to 7. But this actually goes above the beta. And what this, no, this is known as is, as is a beta cutoff. And, and what it means is, is that the best that the minimizer can achieve so far is a 6. And he wants to keep the score as low as possible. And here we see that white can improve alpha, so the high, his best score possible, the maximized score above beta or in other words there's no way that black is going to go down and make this move going down this path because he's already got a score that's better than the that's lower than the the best score that white can make here so he's just not going to make it and in terms of where human would think is saying well there's no point in making that move because say I can capture a queen on here well I can only capture or let's say I only lose a knight here but I've already lost my queen going down the first move of this route, there's no point searching the rest of the moves because whatever happens with the scores from the rest, white can make the score higher than the minimum score that black has been able to choose so far. I hope that's clear. And that's known as a beta cutoff, which means we don't actually need to search this node at all. And if there were 50 other moves here, we wouldn't need to search them at all. There's no point because black can get a more minimum score or a lower score by going down this path and already knows that because the first score here was higher than beta. So when we're back up then to the root, we've now returning a score of 6 and we can set alpha now at the root here with a score of 6. So if we drop down through the other side, we've now got beta as plus infinity for the minimizer and alpha as 6 for the maximizer. And now if we drop down here, you see that we get a 1. So we don't actually improve alpha at all here, going back down through this side. We then get our 2 here, which doesn't improve our alpha. Our alpha is still 6. We still know that we can, backed up to the root, score a 6. And we fill here for the maximizer of the 2, because that's the best score available. And now it's the real interesting thing. The minimizer here takes a 2, which means beta gets re reduced from infinity down to 2. Well, that means that beta has gone under the value of alpha, which means again we've got a, what's called a beta cutoff. And what's that saying? What that is saying is, is by this path the minimizer can get a 2, which is below the best score the maximizer can get going the other way. So that means there's no way that the maximizer white is going to go down this path because the minimizer can already beat his best score or lower his best score from going on the left hand side path which means we don't need to search any of these nodes on the right hand side here there's no point even if they would give the minimizer a minus 10 or something due to the scores it isn't going to be chosen this path because we'd already seen that the 6 could be lowered going this path to a 2 so it's just not going to be chosen by white he's going to take this path here and that's how alpha beta works in a nutshell and what it's very very dependent on as you can see here is it's very very dependent on move ordering um, I haven't got an example done out in the slides here like this but if you imagine that the moves were tested in a different order so let's say that these moves that are blacked out here say this one gave a 7 as best so it returned uh, a 7 from the maximizer and therefore black would have a 7 here to start with and only search this move then here then we wouldn't have a beta cutoff because he wouldn't know till he'd searched all of the moves in this position that could get underneath alpha and it's only because this move was searched first that we got the beta cutoff straight away so alpha beta is very dependent on move ordering but when the move ordering factor is good you can reduce the branching factor from say around 30-35 to around 6, so it's an enormous saving of nodes. In terms of code, it looks very similar to the min-max, just with the bounds of alpha and beta, and again we have this negating mechanism in the middle here, so we don't have to split the functions up into min and max, and therefore the bounds are also flipped when they're passed into the 
uh, the, 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 when the, the next call of alpha beta is made, just in the way that we still have the minus sign here. And what I'd recommend is really is taking, like I said, a tree of depth two and just walking through this with a pencil and paper to make sure it's clear how the bounds work here. Okay, so what's coming up then in the engine? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to have to implement some things to be able to implement the search. So we're going to be implementing something called a PV table, which is a small table or array which will hold the best line found to a given depth by our engine during its search. We'll have to implement this evaluation function. It won't be very big, but it'll be something with not just material evaluation to be able to evaluate a position to get scores inside our alpha beta algorithm. Obviously, we're going to be implementing the alpha beta. To do the alpha beta, we're going to implement move ordering. And this is why we have an array for the move scores inside our game board structure, because now we'll be altering the add move functions inside our move generator so that we can score the moves depending on different heuristics, which you'll see. And last but not least, we've got something called iterative deepening. And the way iterative deepening works is, say you want to do a search to depth where you've got, now let's say you've got a minute to search. Well, the way you search is you simply start with depth equal to one, and you keep going depth plus plus, and then you call then alpha beta at that depth. And you get then the score. So you say that the score for the position equals alpha beta at that depth. So you would start with, um, sorry, not depth two, with depth one. Once you completed depth one, you'd say, has my time run out? No. Okay, I'll do depth two. Has it run out? Depth three, has it run out? No, 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 no. And, if, and that has two benefits. One, obviously, is when you go, if on a time-limited game, say you've got 30 seconds to search for a move, well, you don't know how long how much depth you can achieve inside the 30 seconds. So you could say, okay, I'll search straight off to depth six, but you might not get there inside the 30 seconds and therefore you won't actually have a move to make. So doing it this way allows you to search from depth one, which is always almost instant, to uh, depth two and so on, and abort the search at any time, but you can guarantee you've got a score and a move to make from the previous search. However, that probably seems at first glance to be very, very inefficient. We search depth one, then we search depth two, then we search depth three. But actually, the heuristics that you can save, and you'll see this in the writing of the program from previous searches, so restoring which moves were good during the search and which were bad, etc., to improve the move ordering, actually makes the search more efficient in this manner than, say, searching to depth six straight away rather than doing depths one to five first of all. You actually get there quicker doing the depths one to five, first of all, because of the improvements you can get to the move ordering. But we'll be getting to all that when we start actually implementing these algorithms. So that's it then for this video. It's a very, very quick gloss over. There are some great videos on alpha beta on YouTube. One of them, I forgot the name of the guy because I talked about it in the C chess engine series I've done, but I'll put the link to that video as well. He does a much better and more thorough explanation of how the alpha beta game tree algorithm works. So thanks very much for listening and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.